and something on the other corner of the program breaks. So, meet Cooper. Uh, it's a library that I made to try to make this uh, problem easier, and that I released during the Europe Python 2015. Uh, so, um, the way this, com uh, this library works, it's a decorators library, and it also has a meta class that is injected here by inheriting from cooperative. Um, and when we use the cooperate uh, decorator, this makes sure that the method is going to cooperate properly. So it's actually going to call super for guarding, for guarding all the keyword arguments. Uh, and it's also do, uh, going to do checks, like for example, make sure that our signature uh, is only based on keyword arguments. Um, uh, also then, if another class overrides this method, uh, you will get an error. Uh, it also supports abstract methods and so forth. Um, so this is an example where we can see uh, the forwarding of arguments working. So I have a text class um, and a with border class that adds, uh, it's, it will be like a mixing that could add border to a text. When I multiply inherit from it, I could pass um, explicitly naming the arguments, the arguments to the right classes of the hierarchy. Actually, this mixing pattern is very useful um, and there is this function <coughs> that is uh, provided by the library that allows you to create actually this class that combines the other two classes uh, dynamically in the context where you need it. So you don't need to explode uh, your hierarchies. Um, there are more features <coughs> that are not so important. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to go uh, look at the project here. Thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Juanpe. So, uh, Tudor Fabathel. Tudor. Fantastic. Sorry, it's a tough meeting. Okay. <laughs> so, just while we wait for a second, um, what was the witch? You want to <laughs> tell us a story? Wow. Anything? Nothing. Do you think I might have run out of stories? Do you think I could have some more? Tell it. Tell it what? <laughs> we could do that. Cool. Anyway, to go, we might have a little bit more. All right, then let me just say very quickly. I know you've heard a lot about it, but I've worked with the Django Girls Project, and it's made a huge difference in my oh, personal yeah. life. Nice. It might make life easier for women trying to get into programming, which is a wonderful thing. But I'll tell you what: being involved with that organisation has changed the way that I think about programming and that I interact with programmers around me. So that whole diversity thing—it uh, doesn't necessarily just be about you know helping out one group to become part of a larger group, but it actually does benefit individuals in that group as well. So they've made a huge difference to my life, to the way I think about programming, and so I just hope that some of that rubs, out on, on, rubs off on everybody in this room. So if you don't mind too much, let's just give them a wonderful uh, round of applause because they're brilliant and it's really great. You're not forced to use emoji everywhere, but now you feel like you have the option, you know? <laughs> so, so this guy out. walks into a bar. <laughs> and the bar is empty apart from the barman okay. and a man with an orange for a head. So, what do you have to tell us, Tudor? So, I'm here to talk to you about APIs and why are they bad. So, speak I into the start, mic. I should start by the, the defin with the definition of an API, which is an application programming interface, which can be considered a set of routines, protocols, and tools for building software applications, which is kind of vague because everything a programmer interacts with is an API. So, the purpose of an API would be making things talking to each other. In 2011, Programmable Web did a survey, and some of the big names got it wrong. What can go wrong with your API? Firstly, your documentation can be very, very wrong, and sense of a bad documentation are missing, inaccurate, out of date, incomplete, unprofessional, difficult to browse, and the worst, boring. <laughs> How can you fix this? by using two simple principles, keeping it short and thinking long term. My two cents about an API would be offering a, a structured overview for simple access 
to different components of your documentation, easy access to find something on your documentation, clear description, very simple but enlightening in-out examples, standardize the communication between your clients and the entire API. So number two reason would be bad communication. And where can this occur? Well, between developers, between developers and management, between developers and QA. How can you fix this? Well, you can implement good communication channels like Jira, HipChat. You can have application change logs like GitHub and Jenkins. You can keep a project roadmap, a change, a change list, and a blog or knowledge base. Reason number three would be a bad, ex bad beginner experience. How can you fix this? Well, copy-paste examples are always good. Uh, defining a sufficiently small and comprehensive SDK is better. Quick start guide for the API and developer and client, also good. And offering a sandbox test environment would be the best option. Reason number four would be that your API is unreliable. And the sense of an unreliable API would be outages, unannounced API changes, throttling, or bugs. The big don'ts of an API is serving raw server errors, it's not elegant or helpful, or serving stack traces, which is a security problem. How can you fix all of this? You could have build automation, con continuous integration, continuous monitoring of your systems, you should inform your customers of outages, and you should implement user-friendly error designs. And you may ask, what are these error messages and their design? Well, you should keep your error messages simple and clear, they should have error codes, they should be wrapped in data structures, give as much information as possible to your client, but still don't be verbose and use HTTP's built-in capabilities. After you implement all of this, this is the expected client's behavior. <laughs> Reason number five would be that everything is too complicated f within your API. And the symptoms for overcomplicating your API would be a complex API workflow, arguably OAuth, or not using JSON data representation and ignoring all HTTP rules within an RESTful API. My suggestion for fixing all of this, kiss principles, being practical, and as much as you can, avoid XML. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for listening. <laughs> All right, if we still don't have the author of the entry number seven, a good course in Python, nope, then uh, we would like, please, Webcam 2015 with Denny Bertovic. yourselves, everyone. <laughs> Are you ready to go? Yeah. Hey! So, hi, my name is Denny. I'm one of the organizers of a conference in Croatia uh, in the city of Zagreb. Uh, it's called WebCamp. Uh, this is the fourth year uh, that we're doing it, um, and it's organized by the uh, local communities, uh, the local meetup communities, that is. Um, and it's a sort of uh, poly conference in the sense that we have talks uh, in different technologies. So it's not just Python, it's Python, PHP, JavaScript, some functional programming languages, and we also have designer talks. Um, last year we had uh, around uh, 800 uh, people. Um, uh, and uh, you, sh you, should, you should visit uh, to get a uh, possibly different perspective uh, about how, how your colleagues uh, in, in di different programming languages uh, are, are, are using uh, web technologies. Um, the, the CFP is closed, uh, but you should submit a talk uh, anyway. If it's very good, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be sure to squeeze it in. Uh, tickets are available uh, on the website listed uh, above. Uh, I also have uh, five tickets uh, that we are giving out. 
so uh, just uh, tweet at this Twiddle handle, uh, and uh, you know the first five uh, who tweet to me, I'll send you a code so you can get a free ticket. Thanks. Okay. Uh, up next, we'll have one more talk. Let's have uh, Cesar de Salles for Life Hacks with Python. Welcome, Cesar. Look, we're not going to have the joke about the man with an orange for a head. Um, that one takes forever, and it's wonderful. But the only way that it would happen is that I would tell you half the joke, and then you would have to wait a year <laughs> to hear the punchline. So we can't have that. So let me tell you uh, a different joke, which is very short, that somebody else told me yesterday, which is in a different child, a different style. Um, this is about a man who's, uh, well, let's say it's a woman who's walking down the street. Uh, you should choose women as your default examples in documentation or in jokes, I heard recently, if the jokes are about programmers. So it's a programmer lady who's walking down the road, and she spots a horseshoe on the ground. And she's like, oh, I wonder what's on the other side of that horseshoe. So she bends over and picks it up. On the other, ha on the other side, there's a horse. <laughs> Don't clap the jokes. No, come on. Like, just, just like laugh and go, ha, 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 ha. Ah, yeah, that wasn't too bad. Gosh, oh, that was sure better than the extractor fan one. Yeah. Are you ready, Cesar? Hello, everyone. My name is Cesar. So I just, I just want to share a couple of thoughts with you. Uh, maybe helpful for life. Uh, in Python, of course. The first thing is you should get uh, enough sleep. Oh, yeah. There is actually no, no bug that can uh, take a good sleep. Maybe sometimes you are really like focused, thinking about a problem, and then you go to bed. And the day after, uh, it just uh, happens that the solution comes to your mind. So you get six to eight hours uh, sleep. But then uh, you soon cheat. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's a, I have a live demo for this. <laughs> so I'm going to sleep uh, for 10 hours. Uh, wait a second. So, yeah, it's a synchronous, a synchronous sli sleeping. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> Next one is uh, find out about your biggest distractions <laughs> and get rid of them. <laughs> this is mine. <laughs> Which one is yours? Uh, also, uh, for instance, in my team, I try to get a uh, morning, uh, morning of uh, no meetings. It's a nice rule. But again, I have a, a live demo. And then, yeah. Basically, it doesn't work out all the time. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, not all batteries are included. Sometimes it's good to get out of the computer. <laughs> You know, there are things that are more important than uh, others. So get your priorities high. Uh, this is also a call for all Swiss Pythonistas. Uh, get in touch with me. Uh, maybe we can organize the Swiss PyCon. Uh, all the rest are welcome, but uh, bring cash. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Cesar. Fabio, are you ready? You want some more time? Yeah, here we go. The more Fabio tries to prepare his final presentation, the more lightning talks we can have. So that's a huge win. Take your time, mate. Take your time. It's all right. There you go. What have we got next? Well, we've got uh, um, uh, an announcement about something called PYSS15 by someone called Alex Savio. And I don't know how that's pronounced. Um, but I suggest that it should be pronounced PYSS. Just going to put that out there as a possibility. There you go. I want a joke. Are you plugging in? Good. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Maybe he's just ready. No joke. Yeah. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Well, I, um, 
I'm a mouse who couldn't play. Uh, well, I'm here to present the, the on-site team who uh, helped the EPS organizing the, this conference. We had a, well, Fabio will tell you. Uh, I'm also here to present the, uh, um, a conference we are organizing in October this year. Uh, so who we are, who, who are we? We are the Asociación uh, Python San Sebastián. Uh, some people say PySS. I, we like calling it PIS. <laughs> so, sorry, no, no puns intended. <laughs> so who, uh, the members, uh, some people you, you have seen with the green T-shirt. Uh, some people you haven't seen here. Uh, so, and some helpers, very nice people. Um, so, oh, sorry. So where are we? Um, we are uh, in San Sebastian, which is uh, a small town on, uh, on the coast, one hour from here. Uh, so what? Okay, let me Google it for you. So this is San Sebastian. It's on the beach. Has the most, uh, the highest concentration of Michelin stars. Um, yep. Uh, in October, the, the weather is good, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no rain at all. So what are we doing? Uh, we are mostly organizing meetings and conferences. Uh, last year we organized uh, PIS 14, the, the first PIS. Uh, we, we, invited, we invited very nice uh, Pythonistas, uh, Gael, uh, Ben Notal from Raspberry Pi, who's here, and Luis Pedro, uh, mostly scientific uh, Pythonistas. We had a lot of pinchos, but the good ones, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we cannot make those for so many people. So they had a lot of fun. Um, yeah, we are, we are also organizing software carpentries. We are trying to do that every year in the University of the Basque Country. Uh, we are also doing education meetings, uh, bringing uh, uh, schools to talk about uh, robotics, uh, training them on drone uh, flying. Uh, was fun, and then we organized this conference, uh, very big conference for us, uh, very short time. Uh, and now I'm announcing P15. It's <laughs> so, yeah, it's, I'm sorry, this was a satellite event. Um, <laughs> So yeah, it's going to be in the end of uh, October. Uh, follow us on Twitter, and this is our website. Thank you. Alex Savio there, a man whose smile only gets wider the more nervous and stressed he is. <laughs> Which, inside, he might be feeling terrible, but everyone around him is like, oh, look at that, he's smiling, and it helps them relax, so it's good for other people. Okay. All right, so up next is Fabio, and the next round is uh, not a lightning talk. We're going to have a little round maybe to uh, talk about this conference and its organizers and say thanks. So um, I'm going to be expecting some sort of overwhelming applause from you guys. But like, you know, let's see how the presentation flows out before we give it. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe we can have like one more verse of the man with an orange for a head story. Wrong. <laughs> Fab. So we're going to be hurting our hands anyway during this thing. So would you like to like start with some gentle applause for Fabio and all the other organizers? So welcome everybody to this closing note. Um, this is going to be a sort of extended lightning talk. It's going to be um, without much pictures, so probably boring. 
I will try to make it not boring. Your Python 2015 is ending. Um, <laughs> so um, we hope you had a good time. We had a dif very difficult year, really difficult. Um, we uh, the future was of EuroPython was very uncertain. Um, many different opinions. Uh, it's always very hard to build a community. It's always very hard to deal with um, tension. But uh, like this year, I think it's it's the proof that if um, everyone is very committed, if we try to um, not look into other mistakes or things that they did wrong, but look at their uh, skills and how they can, how they would like to um, help the community. Uh, we can actually manage to have uh, a growing uh, and very welcoming and um, good community. So uh, I would like to give some stats about this year. Uh, so first, number of attendees. Um, this is part of us trying to uh, be more open, be more transparent, make understand what what means uh, make, to make uh, such an event um, and the com try to get the community involved. So those are the, the numbers for countries, attendees. Um, so Germany, Spain, Great Britain, um, uh, <laughs> Basque country, sorry. <laughs> so France, uh, actually had uh, quite a few people from outside from the US, then I have one list all those. Um, this is the second uh, slice of that uh, table. The curious is we actually had people from very far, um, Pakistan, um, Mexico, um, Japan, many codes that I forgot. I, I promise <laughs> that I, I, I swear I searched for all of those I remembered, but I, now I'm forgetting. <laughs> we had officially 1,094 attendees. which is mm, around nine, eight, eight, nine percent less than uh, last year. But I, I wanted to search for the number of flights and connections to get here and compare to, to Berlin, which would be a good ratio about how hard harder it is, is, is. I know Bilbao is the center of the world, sorry, but it's harder to get here. Um, this is a, a chart. Um, about the number of tickets sold during the time. Uh, we are very late this year and we started um, selling, uh, the website was um, in March. So it's quite nice to see the first week where we actually sold around 300 and something tickets. Uh, sorry. Then we have a constant growing. Uh, here we, release the schedule, so you actually see a, a steep curve. And around here we started to, uh, we changed the, uh, the, the rate to online, to on-desk tickets. Um, and this is the social event selling. Um, also, it's, just to give an idea from the um, organizer point of view, it's quite hard to predict um, the number of attendees you are having, especially if you see here. Sometime, uh, at some point, things start to get a, a bit depressing. <laughs> and you have a lot of requests for financial aid. We really wanted to have um, low price tickets, especially for students. And 
we actually take, took a big risk on this because the, the venue is very nice uh, and we, we had the catering and many things, but all those niceties comes with a price. So that's that. <laughs> we we have spent around nearly 2,000 euros, uh, 20,000 euros, sorry, on financial aid. And we really hope that this can increase a lot in the next years. Um, this, this we, we, we aim to do that by, well, hopefully we get some money from this year to have on the budget. Uh, and also, like we starting much, much earlier uh, and communicating things earlier, uh, talking with sponsor, we hope that that will help as well. Unfortunately, we had two cases of code of conduct. Um, this is something that can happen on a big conference like this. Uh, I would like to remember that uh, code of conduct uh, is there for a reason. It's not only about uh, gender. It, I would like to invite everyone that doesn't feel comfortable with something to uh, come to the uh, code of conduct team, try to explain um, the kind of, uh, of conduct team will try to get to the person that did, did something. We try, we try to, to talk and, and speak with people. Um, many times, most of the times, those things do, do not happen by intention. Um, so this is a very um, difficult task uh, and never, very, very difficult for everyone that are involved. Uh, and again, uh, you, I invite everyone to not feel um, uh, afraid to speak and because uh, we, we really want a welcome communi community. We really want everybody to, to, be, uh, uh, to feel that they are safe, they are having a good time. Uh, so to everyone, just remember that you are with other 1,093 pe people, person here, everybody, they have their own feelings, they have their own um, culture. So that's the message I would like to pass by. Everything was prepared in six months. Um, around October last year, we still didn't um, know anything. I, we still didn't, didn't know if we would have uh, a conference this year. And uh, we did a really, the European Society did, did a really hard job looking for teams to try to, to organize. Uh, in like in many case, many things in life, the, the, this came just by um, out of nowhere, by uh, friends, shared friends, sending a message on a, on a night out with other friends saying on a cider house, actually, <laughs> saying, so what, what, what about having EuroPython uh, in San Sebastian? And like after one and a half second, yes, let's do it. <laughs> uh, we actually didn't uh, manage to have it in San Sebastian because of uh, prices, uh, especially for the hotels. Um, in January, we started preparations, started working on many things. In the meanwhile, the, the EuroPython Society started uh, working on the work groups concept to try and um, uh, remove some of the efforts, or some, some of the, the weight on the uh, local organizers' so shoulders. It didn't work as we expected, but we also managed to do some work. Um, in March, the, we, we launched the website in, with many difficulties. Uh, in June, we released the schedule, which is quite late. The conference, five days plus two days of sprints. We had 170 talks, um, 25 trainings, poster sessions, open sessions, lightning talks. And, and now, some more less serious stat statistics. We had <laughs> 1,000 
500 liters of coffee. <laughs> 3,000 cheese croquettes. <coughs> 44, uh, 24,000 <laughs> breakfast pastries. Actually, it, we had too, many, too much food. 400 liters of beer here. <laughs> uh, we tried to, to have the number for the, the party, but it didn't work, sorry. <laughs> Actually, we also tried, <laughs> before that, we actually tried also to um, have a function to, for the best memories of the, the party, but it raised a memory leak. So um, we had 300 mission badges during the registration. We actually, who here saw the, the, the long queue at the registration and was, uh, the, the organizer raised two hands. <laughs> um, we had around 150 unassigned tickets, so we actually more or less didn't know who were who was who were them assigned. But it's also because uh, it means that the website was not clear, so we had tried to fix that for the next year. <laughs> I'm not involved in this one, so. <laughs> yeah, well, this, this is uh, for the Polish guys. <laughs> not in general, <laughs> Polish friends. Yeah, sorry. Polish people. We had zero soups. <laughs> zero potato <laughs> mash. <laughs> but <the> infinite pictures. <laughs> Okay, so I don't, I don't know if it's less serious or more serious, so um, we had six or core organizers uh, and 33 volunteers at the beginning. Great. But only around 10 really active. <laughs> And from those 10, uh, the core team was full. So out of uh, 33 volunteers, just four active, mm -hmm. really active. Um, so again, uh, all the help is really appreciated. This is a call for volunteers from the work groups. Uh, back to statistics, we had around, those ter ter 10 people did around 11,200 hours working on the conference in six months. It's around <laughs> a lot of time <laughs> that they are uh, taking from their spare, their spare time, from their friends, their family. So if we, in the future, we can really split that on 100 volunteers, that would be awesome. <laughs> This is through statistics. One of us had a um, distance counter. <laughs> and we measured, like, from Sunday, he, he walked around 100, uh, 130 kilometers. <laughs> the big question. Well, where will be Aeropython next year? And it will be Mimbao. So. <laughs> so I, I just want to close saying really, really thank you to all the volunteers, the people that really, really, really push uh, themselves so hard organizing this. 
uh, on the uh, uh, thank the sponsors. Thank you um, for being here, for uh, understanding the problems, uh, the very, very good and nice atmosphere. Um, I hope you enjoyed as much as we did. Um, and thank you for coming. See you at the sprints or see you next year. And thanks again to everyone. Fabio, 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 Fabio. Wait, 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 wait. Guys, Fabio, should we have all the organizers and any volunteers up on stage? Come on, we want to give them a big round of applause. Yeah. We want to see them. Come Sorry, on, guys, right. the green t-shirts. Let's see you. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. If you're wearing a green t-shirt, come on. If you're wearing a yellow t-shirt, you can come on stage as well. Anybody that's involved in volunteering or right, you can come up on stage. If you can't get up to the stage, just stand up and have people clap you. Here they all are. Everyone, this conference can't happen without them. Thank you to each and every one. Come on up, you deserve it. If you're a volunteer, even if you haven't got the t-shirt right now, do come up, look at them. Come forward, you're in the dark here, you're not going to be on video. There you go, run around. Woo! You should run off stage and then come back on stage for the second bow. <laughs> Bravi! <laughs> That's embarrassing, embarrassingly nice. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, thank you guys. Thanks. If you want, we're going to finish up a little bit of lightning talks. We've got this room until about 10 to 7. Um, but if you would like to go home or if it's time for going for a beer, this is a good time to leave the room. Otherwise, we're going to try and have four, five, six more lightning talks just to finish off the day. And of course, it doesn't finish off the conference. We've got the sprints tomorrow. We've got the sprints the day after that. We've got IRC and email and mailing lists and GitHub and, and Bitbucket and other excellent code sharing websites that we all use just as much as the main one. Uh, there you go. Look at them. Wonderful. Look at them. All organizey. All organizey. All voluntary. No, no. Shh. No, no, no. <laughs>